Hey, what's good, people? It's your man Animal Brown checking in. Welcome to With That Being Said, special year-end edition. All right, we're going to be recapping 2019 with these questions we got here. If you're new to the show, welcome. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. That's number one. Number two, I got my people with me, Chris Dog and Bougie Brother Sean. Hey, man, 2019 was a wild year. We're going to do our best to try to recap it. But in case you've never watched the show, we've got five topics. We're going to do a debate each round. Whoever wins the round gets a point. Who has the most points at the end of the show wins the game. It's that simple. Let's kick things off. I'm going to get straight to the point. When you look back at 2019, had a lot of releases, had a lot of big dogs kind of play the background a little bit this year. Chris Dog, let me ask you, what are some of your top albums from 2019? 2019 brought a whole new world of hip hop. And I'm okay with it. It took me a while to get on board with it, especially 2018 started really introducing 17, 18, the women of hip hop. And it, it took me a while to get on board with it, but I'm here now. And I thought Meg Thee Stallion showed out, showed up, showed everything this year. She's super, she's a great artist and I'm glad that she's here. Um, the baby did his thing. Um, J. Cole, Stay relevant with all of his features. Uh, you got uh, what the baby, little baby. It's so many people that showed up this year. I'm, I'm proud of hip hop as a whole that we was able to take different genres, mesh them all together, and appreciate all of them at the same time. And that is the, that's the only answer I can give to this question. What was your top album of the year? The top album, I still have to go with Meek Mill Championships album. I thought he was. Ooh. I thought he his his relevance to the year to the community and the music that he put out all put together was the best body of work. All right, let me ask you this, Sean. What was your top album of 2019? Well, Meek Mill's championship album could not be the top album of 2019 because it did not get released in 2019. It exactly. Got released at oh, the did end I did I select that one? Uh, yeah. So, unfortunately, even though that was a great body of work, really good, Fire. applaud to okay. Meek Mills. I couldn't give it to him. Um, some of the top albums I would put up there is, of course, Freddie Gibbs gets it for me. Mm. YB and Cardae, Lost Boys, definitely gets kudos for me. It wasn't my personal favorite, but compared to what, everything else that came out this year, that definitely does stand out. It, uh, Eve Rhapsody's album gotta give Rhapsody her credit once again she is the top female artist out here she might not look the best she might not sell the best she might not market the best but lyrically and hip hop wise she is the best uh, I'm gonna kind of stop right there okay but yeah not a bad top uh, couple of albums though you mentioned that Freddie Gibbs that was the that was the key right there that bandana was nuts uh, that's easily a top three album this year. And this point goes to Sean for naming albums that came out in 2019. All right. Come on, Chris, dog. We got to wake up. Even though was, that Meek did come out dumb late last year, but it was still that's last year right. nonetheless. All right, moving on. Again, we're keeping it with the theme of 2019. Uh, bougie Brother Sean, who was your hip-hop rookie of the year? Oh, man, they got some real good rookies that came out, man. Super shout-out to Gunner. Gunner came in and, and stunned it out. I even heard KD. Talk about Gunna is better than Lil Baby out here. You know, but me personally, I'm definitely going to go with Roddy Ridge. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my boy right there, dude. I love everything that he do. I love everything that he stand for. I love how he rap. I love his sound. He's able to blend the Lil Wayne and the, and the Young Thug together to make it kind of sound like his own. But he's from California. Oh, like... Yeah. Who would have thunk it? So, yeah, I'm, I'm going for Roddy Rich for Rookie of the Year for me. All right, Chris Dog, who you got for Rookie of the Year? Okay, Rookie of the Year came down to two for me. Uh, it was Meg Thee Stallion and The Baby. Those two, those two ripped through the scenes with no bias to anybody. They, they gave it all they had, and sometimes it was a little too much. But it's okay. I, and, but who I'm going to give the heads to is going to be The Baby because... He he's just he's just all over the place. Uh, he just had a, um, a Saturday Night Live showing that he showed up on. He performed. He brought out his dancers. He's putting people on, and uh, you know he's basically from the south, and he's doing his thing. I, I can't I can't say anybody else but him. Everybody else is just uh, subpar, and that's not saying bad. Subpar is not bad for rookie of the year. Absolutely, but the baby he's. 
making everybody listen to his music. I'm fans of both of the artists that you guys named. I thought Roddy Rich had a good year. Um, he did his thing on a couple of features, had a banger for the summer on that Mustard record. But I've got to give this one to the baby. Uh, a lot of people weren't on him until previous. I'd say around March is when he really took off, and he's been in everyone's face ever since. Uh, this one goes to Chris Dogg, absolutely. Rookie of the year, should be a slam dunk for everybody. It's gotta be the baby representing North Carolina, all right? Now, moving on, in 2019, whew, excuse me, good look, bad look, no look, guys, moving on. I'm gonna ask you, Sean, the overall landscape of hip hop in 2019. We had big years in 2017 and 18. What about 19, good look, bad look, or no look? Yeah, I believe 17 and 18 were so high, such a high point, man. I, I even remember going through 18 and we're like, well, you know, it wasn't as good as 17, but 18 was super hard. Compared to 19, 19 has dropped tremendously. I'm, I'm talking about half of what 17 brought to the table. So, but it, it did give, you know, like my competitor said, it did give a lot of windows of new artists to kind of open up and, and give them their lanes to show what they can do. And, and you know, so that's a good thing. You know, Rihanna still hasn't came out. You know, Drake only came out once in the past two years, three years. You know, it's 2019 is just a miss of the mark. It had a lot of pat, a lot of deaths in hip hop come around this way, man. It, it's just, man, I'm I'm happy it's over. Good look, bad look, no look for you, Chris Dog. What's the year? 2019 was a bad look as far as hip hop goes. Mm. Uh, it wasn't. It, it, they you had no albums that were dropped by um, super relevant people, and, and that's what was the you know the breaker for the year nobody who everybody keeps on the tip of their tongue dropped an album and that's really what matters when it comes to that um we're gonna you're gonna hear people win grammys and awards that you you never would have thought would have won and then again that's because people didn't drop you, you know your jay-z's your um Ah, right, damn you can, can you put anybody name next to jay-z yeah, <laughs> i'm just saying but People like that are always going to be in the category, and that we didn't have those guys drop this year, and it's unfortunate, so bad look as far as I go. Yeah, it's all about moments when you look back at a year, and we count on those A-listers to give us those moments mixed in with a couple of the rookies and then uh, some vets here and there, and we just didn't get to the A-listers drop. Kendrick didn't drop. Drake didn't drop, really. Uh, Jay. Oh. Kanye dropped, but not what people were necessarily looking for. Cole didn't drop. It's the A-listers just didn't show up. They took a year off. That gives you something to look forward to for next year, possibly. But Chris Dog is absolutely right. You get the point on this one. We need those A-listers to drop to balance out everything else in terms of vets and rookies as well. Now let's get to the next question, the big boy question of the year: MVP. Who is your most valuable player, Chris Dog, in 2019? Most valuable player has to go to the baby. Ooh. Unfortunately, we don't have that many guys that's doing a thing. I'm sorry, I'm speaking from a hip hop perspective. I'm not disrespecting the baby at all. I just think that his body of work in the in the music that he put out and how he put it out and how people, you know, were drawn into it, whether it be social media or the music itself, it transcended. The kids like it. I like it. Older people can even jam to it and he he that's what wins MVP for me. You gotta be the most valuable player in that and that has to transcend over all of the, you know, areas that matter. All right, all right. You got the baby. Who do you got, Sean, winning the MVP? Man, it, it's kinda hard to deny it, man, but J. Cole has been putting in some serious work for literally the past two or three years. The first year he he decided that he was gonna put out Forest Hill Drive and then after that he wanted to get real personal. And then you started notice him getting into his family, his team. His, his Dreamville record label. From there, he started doing his features. This year, he's done features and he put all his homeboys on. I don't think you can do that. The, the last team that did that was, let's say, Dipset, Quality Control, Rock Nation, I mean, Rockefeller, uh, G Unit. Those people of those sorts are, are that caliber of artists can do that. J. Cole has done that. 
He has also given nominations to people who won't even be thought of giving nominations by. They don't even have to win anything. Just the fact that these hood folks got nominations on the Dreamville Revenge of the Dreamers 3 is an accomplishment within itself. Those are MVP moves. That's some James Harden stuff right there. Yeah, I, I like that. I think J. Cole, what he did was set himself up for the next couple of years. He, he played the long game because he didn't actually drop a solo project this year. I think the baby set himself up for this year and made his stamp on 2019, leaving his footprint. And for that reason, I got to go with Chris Dog again. The rare rookie of the year slash MVP winner. How doesn't does happen, happen often. How does it happen? But, hey, I think this was one of those years he went all in. He dropped two projects, not just one. He had a couple of radio joints. He was featured on a lot of people's joints, had standout verses on Dreamville's project, on Lil Nas X, on Lizzo, on Megan Thee Stallion. He was everywhere. Yeah. And it, it was undeniable. Some people are, this is how you know when uh, you, you, you win in the game. Now people are talking about his style. Now everybody don't like him. Every song sounds the same now. So the same people were feeling it in March. Now you get to the end of the year and they're tired of you. That's how you know you're winning. Yeah. Um, so shout out to the baby. Right now, Chris Dog is winning in a runaway. Sean, come on now. We got to make it look respectable toward the end of the show with the final question. Going into 2020, taking a look in the rear view back at this decade past, what are some of your top albums? Albums. Give me, you got a top three Chris Dog from the, or excuse me, top three artists from the past decade. Past decade, uh, that is a good question. I'm gonna go with the classics. Right? I'm a classic kind of guy. Uh, J Cole, um, the Forest Hill Joint. I mean, can you, you got to put that up there with some of the best albums ever? Mm. Um, Kendrick, can, how could you not miss a Kendrick? Uh, he, he's 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 the bomb and, and Cardi and Cardi and Cardi. Okay, I, I say it three times. Sometimes <laughs> you know you, you you hear an album and they say something that's so far they gotta say it three times. Cardi. Okay? okay, so those are my three top artists right there. All right, who you got, Sean? What your your artists uh, of the la uh, past ten years? Who's kind of been the most influential in your opinion? I swear I don't know what rock that Chris Dog been under uh, this past decade, but clearly none, none of those three are the most impactful of this decade. Mm. Now let's do some numbers here uh, on, a, on a family tree. Jay-Z bred J. Cole. So first most impactful has to be Jay-Z. And then let's go here. Cole, I mean Lil Wayne bred Drake. So let's go Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, and Drake. <laughs> Three okay. most impactful in the decade. That's big facts. Like, we got our tattoos out the way, we got our business out the way, and we got our singing out the way. That's that's what two, the last decade's been. Mm. All right. Uh, well, all right. You said it. 10 years. That was hard. Yeah, I, I know. It's tough. It's a lot of things that have happened. The game has changed a couple of times over the last decade. I'm surprised no one mentioned Kanye. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was voted number one album of the decade uh, by Billboard. The album's an undeniable classic. Um, uh, this is tough, man. This was going to Chris Dog. He ran away with it. I'm sorry. Oh, um, yeah, it's rough. Even though you mentioned Cardi, I don't know about that. Uh, uh, you got I don't it. know about that. Even though she did break the mold, she she turned uh, a reality a reality star turned rap superstar. We didn't think that was possible. Uh, so she set the precedent for that. Now they're trying to recreate it. So I, I definitely understand that. It just happened a little bit later in the decade. But everybody else I can respect. Jay-Z's impact on the decade has definitely been felt. Lil Wayne, although he hasn't had a good project since probably 09, <laughs> has still been felt through his influences with Young Thug and, and uh, Drake and everyone else. So I, I, I definitely get it. Looking back at this decade, though, I, I definitely look at it as a, a two thumbs up, a high note, plenty of projects. Kendrick Lamar, Drake, Big Sean, Pusha T, so many fire projects. Watch the throne, for Christ's sake. So listen, putting 2010 and 20 to 2019 in the rear view, we look forward to big things. 2020 to 2030 and we look forward to seeing all of y'all in 2022 don't do no goofy shit on new year's eve right <laughs> now with that being said chris dog uh close this out man give us some final words for the decade oh Ooh. for the decade look Ooh. here the, this is what i'm gonna say for the decade look if you're not tuning in to what's that being said if you're not tuning in to this show if you're not tuning in to my boy animal brown if you're not checking my boy Bougie brother, you are lacking. I said it before. Please, please, please be open 
to great things, and this is what this is. Absolutely, man. For my guys, Bougie Brothers, Sean and Chris Dog, I am Animal Brown. We'll see y'all next year.